Welcome to your 20-minute podcast with David Brower, brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash your 20-minute podcast. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Now, here's your host, David Brower. Thanks, Alan. This is David Brower with Laura Heacock. She's a leadership coach who brings over 20 years' experience in corporate America. She runs a popular personal development blog kindovermatter.com and works with professionals and companies to help them use kindness to end the epidemic of burnout in America. She has an MBA as a certified coach, award-winning writer, in-demand speaker, and author of the book Practical Kindness. Laura, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thank you. It's so wonderful to be here today. I got to tell you, I was, uh, in reading through your stuff, you just don't run over the word kindness very often when you're having business or corporate conversations. So tell me how that all started with you. It's fascinating. Yeah, I will. Uh, You know, I think like most of us, I had my own journey into burnout um, and and kindness, specifically self-kindness, which is where I start with my clients is the thing that brought me out of it. You know, stepping out of that cycle of, um, of busyness and of getting all of our validation from being productive and checking things off the list and to really looking at, you know, my values and how I live my life and why I do what I do. So my work has now pivoted from doing my own work to doing that work with leaders and with companies in order to bring kindness in and use it as their own professional advantage. What a thrill. How do you, how do you break the, uh, I'm going to say stereotype, there's a lot of businesses mm-hmm. in corporate America out there that would just look at the word kindness and go, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So how do you, it's how, funny and I, how do you break down that door? Uh, yeah, for sure. I, you know, and I, I get that feedback a lot. A lot of people say, well, you know, don't companies just care about the bottom line? And what I do is share all the research that says that, you know, stressed out, burned out employees are actually negatively impacting your bottom line. When you create a culture of kindness in your company, which as a leader, it starts with your own self-kindness. Right. You create healthier employees. You create employees that are more dedicated to your team, that are more dedicated to your product. You save health insurance costs. I think the latest statistic I saw was 90% of doctor's visits are attributed to some stress-related illness or, oh, or yeah. side effect. Um, you know, you can really, truly change the the corporation's mindset and change the productivity. And there's a lot of research that supports it. Well, and once you get to those steps and you take care of the inside, for lack of a better term, that has to permeate mm-hmm. to the outside and make your make your clients, your customer base, just feel that much more that much better about doing business with you. I would think. Well, yeah, my favorite story to tell is I was working with a leader. We were doing um, private coaching, and you know her goals were pretty um, personal in in nature. They weren't really focused on corporate goals, but she was a leader. She ran a company, and she came to one of our sessions, and she said oh, I just revamped our entire uh, employee review process. And I was like, ah, that wasn't even one of our goals. But what (laughs) happened was she had so, through her own work and through her own, you know, development of self-kindness practices, she had increased her capacity. And she was just like, yeah, I revamped our review system. You know, I used that book you recommended to me, and I just revamped our own employee review process in the last two weeks. I was like, oh. All right. Is that all? Is that all <laughs> it you was got? Such an yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's all. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> How fascinating. Yeah. And to be able to, ch- I mean, that's a pretty dynamic piece of business, whether it's a, a small uh, entrepreneurship or a, co- a corporate company. Plugging some kindness into employee reviews is, uh, that's pretty significant. Yeah. And what it does is, you know, she had a circumstance right after that where she had an employee that came to her. You know, anybody that's watched the news lately has seen. The job market's crazy, unemployment's super low, you know, there's a a war for talent that people are talking about, but she had an employee that came to her, had gotten an external offer, and she was able to have the conversation with them of, this is what we value in this company, this is what we offer, and, you know, we're not a huge organization, if that's what feels aligned for you, that's great, you know, I wish you all the best. But really think about this and think about, you know, maybe we could do something financially, but also think about what we offer you here. And just getting in touch again, you know, taking care of herself and starting her own self-kindness practices gave her this capacity, changed the review system, got back in touch with the corporate values. And this employee ended up staying. Wow. That's a great story. Yeah. I love stuff like that where people, I mean, it, we get we get going 100 miles an hour and we're all about the immediate gratification and all those kinds of things. And then you, you get to a place where balance just is, isn't even a part of the conversation. And you really help people uh, find some balance with this, don't you? 
Yeah, balance is a big thing. Um, I personally believe in it. A lot of people don't, but I think it depends on how you look at it. But once you start looking, you know, work-life balance doesn't mean, you know, I work for eight hours, I sleep for eight hours, and I'm social for eight hours. It, no. It's not that linear, but it's a very individual process. And and it actually is possible. And once you get into, you know, values, I know I keep saying this, it's a big part of the work that I do. Right. But once you get in touch with that and, and you start, as you said earlier, taking care of your inside, the changes on the outside, one of which often includes balance, are remarkable. Absolutely. I I mean, it took me a long time to figure that out. Well, I shouldn't say I figured it out. I think it, I think <laughs> more, I think it happened organically. You know, I think I woke up one day and I'm going, oh, that's kind of interesting. I'm sharing myself here and I'm sharing myself there and I'm sharing myself here and I'm being productive over there and it's all feels good and I'm sleeping at night. Wow. What a concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I find it's a practice, you know, much like anything that you want to stay, you know, if you're an athlete, you, you practice every day, even if you don't have, you know, a big game coming up and it, you know, self kindness and balance are, are just like that. You have a consistent practice and, you know, sometimes you might go a little bit too far into the work part of life because you might go a little too far into the, relaxed part of life, but it's just a matter of developing that awareness and and really being kind to yourself and and forgiving yourself if that happens and then getting yourself back to that place that feels good. I was going to say forgiveness has got to be a big piece of this as well, because we we overstep our our own boundaries from time to time. And then we go, oh, crap, I guess I'm over it. I'll move on to this other thing, you know? Yeah, I think that um, oftentimes those things I like to describe them they become a brick wall. You know, you just gave a perfect example. You know, I, I'm going to go to the gym every day as is an example. I like to look at (laughs) it. And then you miss one day and it's like, well, I'm a total failure. I guess I might as well just stop this. And you hit the brick wall. And what I like to do with people is help them see that that's just a pothole and the pothole doesn't have to be a stopping point. It's not a brick wall. It's not something that you can't go through. It's a matter of coming back to that forgiveness and saying, okay, maybe that goal was a little too aggressive. Maybe I need to actually celebrate myself for the fact that I went for the past eight days. So right. even if I missed one, it's okay. Yeah. And I can go back and I can do it again. It's it's fascinating to me sometimes. Uh, people I talk to periodically, it doesn't happen all the time anymore. I think it used to happen a lot more. But, but where they would be talking about all these things going on in their life, and, and they might be rattling off eight or nine different things that are just absolutely amazing, whether it's professional, personal, uh, whatever it is. And then all of a sudden they land on this one negative thing, and that's where they stop. That's where they rest. And they don't celebrate the other stuff. So do you, are you familiar with the negativity bias? I'll go into some like brain geek mode for a second. Here. Oh, go for it, please. <laughs> so there is uh, a lot of research that supports the concept of the fact that we're all wired with a negativity bias and, and data points to anything up to five to one, which basically means you're five times more likely to remember something negative than to remember something positive. So one of my favorite practices that I like to do with my clients is to come home every day and, you know, it can be a way to wind down before you go to sleep. It can be something that you do as you're transitioning from, you know, from work to home, but come up with a list of five things on your, like, I'm awesome list. You know, what are five things that you're really proud of yourself for that happened in that day? And it can be anything from, I got out of the house on time, you know, I I got to work on time. I I drank an an amount of water that felt good for my body. Like the simplest things are the most powerful, but that practice when done consistently, again, consistency is a lot of it, that actually helps combat that natural negativity bias that we're all wired with. I do that with gratitude. Yep, same. Right? Mm -hmm. So I find find the littlest things to be grateful about, and I also have to have something to look forward every day in my life, whether it's looking forward to walking my dog or looking forward to a two-week motorcycle trip or looking forward to a power nap. I mean, whatever it is, I look forward to something every day, and then then I, I, I just believe gratitude. I mean, I have a gratitude tattoo for crying out loud. So gratitude is a big part of my deal, you know? Yeah, I'm a firm believer in gratitude. And and I actually wrote about this recently. You know, I I remember when Oprah's show first came on the air. So, I'll you know, like I'll date myself with that. But (laughs) I rolled my eyes for so many years at the concept of gratitude and gratitude journal. And then I finally got over myself. (laughs) And I found a gratitude practice that worked for me. And wow, what an impact it's made. So, you know, I will tell, I will, you know, big love to anyone that's out there rolling their eyes and us having this gratitude conversation. I get it. I've been there and it's actually true. <laughs> it is actually true. I remember when I discovered it, I just, uh, um, I became a cancer survivor 11 years ago and I was walking oh. into my church and, um, and I was just sobbing 
and I couldn't figure it out. And I walked out of the doctor's office, and I was just sobbing, and I couldn't figure it out. And and I asked my pastor, I said, what's this about? And he says, he just looked at me straight in the eye, and he said, gratitude. Oh, my gosh, that gave me goosebumps. That's beautiful. Now I get it. I just gave myself goosebumps. But, yeah, now I get it. And that was like, (laughs) that was the turning point about feeling good on all things, you know? It's Mm -hmm. fascinating to me. Yeah, and it's the stuff that people don't, you know, nobody teaches this in school, right? So we end up being these, you know, these middle career, you know, corporate drones that are just, I call it the lather, rinse, repeat life cycle. You know, if you read an old shampoo bottle, it's lather, rinse, repeat. And we get up, we go to work, we come home, we might hang out with our our partners, our kids, and then we lather, rinse, repeat. You go to bed and you start it over. And, you know, doing these small incremental things, having a gratitude practice, having an I'm awesome list, or I call it you know, start a folder for yourself and call it your add a boy or your add a girl folder and put nice. anything in it that is, you know, a thank you note, a praise from a client, you know, an email, whatever it looks like, you know, starting to incorporate these little things are a big part of building a foundation of self-kindness so that you can then take that out and do the changes that you want to see in the world. And I would think the more that you do that, of course, like anything else in life, you you, you have the opportunity to develop, to, to develop good and bad habits. So this is a, mm-hmm. a good habit, obviously, which also I would think would chip away at that negativity bias. Yeah, it does over time. I mean, brain chemistry is definitely pliable. That's something that we can work with. And, you know, you have very you have ingrained habits and patterns that are kind of like pathways in your brain that are, if you think of a hiking trail, they're really well-worn and they're well-marked and you know what to do and that's where you go. But the more you do these good habits and the more you start to incorporate them into your life, you start to develop other paths and, you know, the weeds start to fall away and that's what becomes the more um, accessible pathway. Wow. How cool. Well, let's talk about your book for a minute. Practical Kindness, 52 Ways to Bring More Compassion, Courage, and Kindness to Your World. You have some amazing reviews. It's on Amazon.com. And um, so tell me how the book came about and and, uh, where it's taken you. Yeah, absolutely. So the funny thing is I I put the book out into the world at the tail end of uh, 2017, early 2018. And when I was pulling it together, I went back in my notes and I actually found a document from two years before all about notes of this book that I was going to do. So it's just a oh, little side note of a testament to, you know, like your dreams don't always abandon you. Even if you're not ready to do something with them <laughs> at that exact moment, you know, they can still resurface at a better time. Um, but what I wanted to create was really just kind of a pocket guide to everyday kindness. It's really digestible little snippets of, you know, ways to bring more kindness into your life. It's meant to be Used as a weekly primer, you know, giving yourself some practices for a week to start to build it. And we really organize it through my own personal journey, um, starting with section one, the foundation of self-kindness. I don't believe that we can make any positive change without first starting to shift that inner voice and starting to be kind to ourselves. So the whole first section is about building that self-kindness foundation. We then step into the second section, which is the courage to be imperfect. I'm I'm raising my hand as a recovering perfectionist, you know, type A overachiever. Yeah. Really letting yourself, you know, step into that courage. Once you have a self-kindness foundation, you can be a little courageous and start allowing those imperfections to, to be visible. And then kind living, which is taking it out into the world. And then the final section is life lessons, which are things that I've learned in my decades on the planet, things that are consistent themes with my clients and a little bit of help to help readers learn some of these lessons maybe a little faster than the rest of us did. The cool thing about your book, I think, is, yeah, it's a book. It's a, it's a, it's a handbook. It's a manual. It's a take it, use it, read it, live it, breathe it kind of thing. It's not read it and put it down. Yeah, and I've had people tell me that they, you know, they'll open randomly to something and just sort of see what the universe wants them to read that day, or they really work it week by week and focus on you know, what I'm going to do in week one. And, and you can, you don't have to start at January 1st. You can start at May 14th, you know, whatever, right, whenever right. you want to start your own kindness and self-kindness journey, you can start this book. And, you know, I say there's no wrong way to use it. Some weeks you'll go back to time and time again. And some weeks you'll read and you're like, ah, I really got that. I'm good. I'm going to go to another week. That, I love that because you have to, I mean, there has to be some aha moments along the way. And, and the book doesn't really dictate those to you. You have to get in there and discover them yourself. Yeah, because my ahas are different from yours, which are different than, you know, Joe across the street. So let's have our own journey. 
That's fascinating. So you've got some great reviews. Uh, let me just grab one at random here. So practical mm-hmm. kindness isn't about reciting flowery affirmations or trying to strive to be better. It's about how we implement very real, sane approaches to kindness into our daily lives. That's pretty good. Yeah, I am, you know, I I might have a little collection of crystals and a meditation altar, but I am pragmatic at heart. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Well, and and I just noticed, I read that at random, but I just noticed that came from another author. Yes. Yes, it did. Yeah. So that's cool. When you get, uh, when you get that kind of recognition from your peers, as well as uh, us everyday folk, uh, that, that speaks to you being on the right path, doesn't it? It does. It feels great. You know, I was, every time I saw a review, it just, yeah, it's, it's an incredible feeling. You know, I, yeah. this is so based in, in my own journey and, and the work that I try and bring in the world. And it's so wonderful to see that it, it does impact people. You know, kindness is important. Kindness isn't weakness. Kindness isn't, as that said, flowery and soft. It's really a life skill that has so many far reaching benefits. Well, and if I, and if I can presume something, I'm going to guess that when you, uh, receive a review like that, it's not a pat on the back so much as it is, oh, I touched somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what it's about. Like now, yeah, I want to know that I want people to know that there's a better way to live. Like that's really, you know, I was just talking to someone this morning and what it comes down to is I'm on a mission to end burnout. You know, I'm on a mission to show people that there is a different way to live and that like, yes, corporate speak, it can be more productive and improve your bottom line and all of that kind of stuff. But really in my soul, it's, Life gets better when you live this way, and that's Absolutely. what I want people to experience. Well, on one of your one of your saw the uh, LauraHeacock dot com site, kind, kindness has the power to reduce staff turnover by forty percent, increase productivity by eighteen percent, reduce workplace stress by eleven percent, improve customer satisfaction by twelve percent. I mean, if you gave me half of those percentages, I'd be happy. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people think about um, Richard Branson is pretty famous for saying, if you take care of your employees, they'll take care of your clients. And I do believe that, but I think there's a first step. And the first step is as a leader, you have to take care of yourself in order to be able to create that environment where your employees can take care of their clients. And my job in, in what I do is I work with those leaders to be able to take care of themselves so that they can take care of those teams that then create customer satisfaction and lower stress and all of those results. And folks, if you want to, uh, your blog is like mind boggling. It's so cool. And it looks like you write one <laughs> every you. day. Is that fair? So I write every Monday and then okay. we are also a bit of an online magazine. We do have new posts going every day by a variety of writers that are all speaking and writing into kindness in some way, shape or form. Wow. So I write every Monday and then uh, the other days in the week, we like to feature other voices in the space of kindness. How cool is that? So kind over matter, life gets better when you're kind to yourself. And the blog, folks, is, is kindovermatter.com and it is filled with so many neat things. And in fact, they can subscribe to receive uh, love notes from Laura, get letters, encouragement letters, and kindness letters, I assume, uh, in your box yep. every day. That's pretty sweet. Yep. Kindness every kindness in your inbox. What's better than that? <laughs> <laughs> so if, if business folks, uh, people want to learn more about kindness, how it can improve their impact, their life, impact their business, what's the best way for them to, to reach out to you and explore some opportunities? Yeah, absolutely. So I love to hear from people. Um, there is a lot of information about my corporate work on laurahecock.com, but I always welcome them to reach out. I'm only an email away, laurahecock at gmail.com. All roads lead to there. <laughs> Great. And yeah, and if you go to laurahecock.com, it's got all the contact information, the resources, uh, the coaching, the speaking, the workshop opportunities, all of those kinds of things. So, well, uh, hats off to you. God bless you for everything you're doing. Uh, you are changing. Uh, you are changing the world, it feels like to me, kid. Thank you so much, David. I so appreciate your time. All right. Have a great week. Your 20-minute podcast with David Brower has been brought to you by Audible. You can listen to any of David's podcasts anywhere podcasts can be found, including iHeartRadio, the Spotify mobile app, and at davidbrowervo.com slash your 20-minute podcast. Until next time, thanks for listening.